So this differentiated services, uh, in order to understand this differentiated service, we need to define certain terminology, uh, something called as the behavior aggregate. So this is a collection of the packet which receives the common treatment. So that is identified by a code point. So all these packets which are sharing a common code point and receiving a common kind of the treatment, it called as the behavior aggregate. And uh, how do you assign this code point to the packets coming from a particular user or the application? Uh, there is a classifier sitting at the entry point which actually identifies who is transmitting, which application is transmitting using a bunch of parameters and then select what kind of the code point to be assigned to this. That's called as the classifier. It might use a set of rules similar to that, the one we used in the packet classifier. And then there is something called as the class selector. Once you uh, classify the uh, packet, then you assign a code point to that particular uh, packet called as the class selector. Class selector is a differentiated service uses a set of classes. Out of those classes, you map the incoming packet to one of these classes. That's the job of the class selector. And the code point is simply the number that is put into that differentiated service file. So in simply, it is also called as the DSCP pin. In this particular field, you write a number, that number is called as the code point. And uh, in the differentiated service model, uh, the 8 bits of the type of service field in the earlier version would take the following meaning. So the first 3 bits of the out of the 8 bits indicate something called as the class selector. They identify a particular class of the uh, traffic. And then the remaining three bits actually indicate the precedence or the uh, priority with which the packet is actually dropped. A combination of these two. First to select what class the traffic is. Within that class, there are multiple dropping preferences. So uh, let's say hypothetically there are two classes. In the class one you have got might be one, two, three, four kind of the uh, dropping preferences. In the class two as well you have one, two, three, four dropping preferences. So that's how a combination of these two. First you select the class and then you select what is the dropping preference. And uh, remaining two bits in this out of these bits are actually not used or if at all they are used, they are used for something called as the explicit congestion control. So ECN stands for explicit con congestion. control. The explicit congestion control is, there are two kinds of the congestion control. One is the uh, implicit congestion control, what the TCP by default uses, uh, which actually interprets the congestion based on the delay variations and the packet drops that are happening in the network. The second kind of the congestion control is something called as the network assisted congestion control, where the network tells the end host that I am experiencing so and so kind of the congestion, you better reduce the transmission rate. So by setting the values in these two fields, the network actually or the router precisely tell the end host that you need to slow down the transmission. For that purpose, this is actually these two bits are actually used. Uh, so uh, uh, out of the eight bits, uh, six of them are used for defining the code points are used for the co assigning the code point and the remaining two bits are used for the explicit congestion control. And the way DSCP actually uh, defined this uh, service model or the code points is it actually uh, mapped the, uh, the different kinds of the classes to uh, one of the I, what the IP preference model actually previously defined. So for example, uh, there is something called the default one is the best effort service delivery model. That's there is no change in that one. And that maps to the routine service model or the routine uh, preference that we had in the IP precedence model or type of service model. And it defined four different uh, uh, type of the classes called as the Azure forwarding model. AF here stands for the Azure forwarding. They are identified by number 1, 2, 3 and 4. So within that for the Azure forwarding, 
number one, the class selector assume forwarding number one roughly maps to what is defined as the priority in the IP precedence model. And similarly, yeah, assured forwarding with the number two roughly maps to what is defined in the uh, IP precedence with the, uh, well, as the immediate, you need to transmit that packet immediately and so forth. The three define compares to the flash and four compares to the flash override and five compares to something called as the critical. Five here is this EF stands for expedited forwarding. So the default one, one class assured forwarding, four different classes were identified by number one, two, three and four. And the fifth one is something called the expedited forwarding model. So that's how the class is actually select, uh, selected. Uh, so in some sense, this is actually giving you some kind of the backward compatibility. The same three bits that are used to define the IP precedence model uh, are uh, in the type of service uh, field are mapped to the class selector in this differentiated service model. And within that, subsequently, the next three bits define the priority of the dropping. So from low priority, drop, uh, if you were to drop it, then the priority of that dropping is low and medium and then high. So in every class, these three types of the dropping priority are defined. So you combine, you assign the number, binary number to this low, you assign a binary number to medium and you assign a number to this high. So that's what is point here. So low is indicated with the number 010, medium is indicated with 100 and high is indicated with 110. And the class selector here, a assured forwarding class number one is identified by writing one in the first three bits, 001. That's the decimal one I'm talking about. So you combine these two when you see it in binary. So 001 followed by 010 indicate that this is the assured forwarding class. This packet actually belongs to the assured forwarding class number one and the priority for uh, dropping this packet is low, meaning so whenever you want to make a choice, you drop that with the uh, low priority, meaning uh, you can actually drop that. If you go to the medium, then with uh, certain higher priority, you need to forward the packet and you need to drop that with the even lower priority. When you go to the higher uh, 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 drop precedence, then you need to forward this packet with the higher priority, then uh, drop it with the very low. Uh, that is the meaning of that. So uh, you treat these three, two, three, three bits independently. Uh, so you might be wondering what is this 10, 12, why there is not 11 and uh, 13 and so forth. That is because of the way these have been numbered. So the service class is always in all the cases it is 001. And uh, these three are taking uh, uh, the binary value 010, 100 and 110. That's the uh, drop precedence. So using which you combine these two independently, that's why it is actually taking this kind of the number. So uh, same is repeated for the assured forward in class number two, three and four. So the same low still uh, low is taking the value by well 010, medium is taking the value 0100 and high is taking the value 110. So all three are actually repeated. And the assured forwarding class number two is actually identified by binary number 010. And similarly, 011 defines the class three and 100 indicates the assured forwarding class number four. So that's how it's actually uh, mapped to the uh, uh, differentiated, uh, uh, sorry, the IP precedence model. The expedited forwarding model is actually the highest priority model that you can think of. So that is actually identified by the number 5101 and then the highest uh, priority within the drop precedent that is 110. Together these two numbers indicate the uh, decimal equivalent of 46. So that's what is actually shown here. So, uh, so in a nutshell, uh, these are called, these values are called as the code points and these many code points are defined and any application, any user traffic is actually mapped to 
uh, only these many number of the code points. So thereby, it actually simplifies the notion at each router. So the operations at the routers are now simplified. What it need to do is to first look into this field and extract the eight bits from the uh, differentiated service field. Look at the first three bits and identify the class and the next three bits and then you identify what is the precedence for dropping using which you make the forwarding decisions. You actually, the router will understand, okay, I need to, uh, if I have to drop, I need to drop this packet to this particular uh, priority. If I have to forward this packet and then I need to uh, forward, this is expecting so and so, this belongs to the class EF, I need to forward it to very high priority without uh, much of the delay and if it is of the class 4, then uh, so uh, slightly less priority is given to that in forwarding something like that. So that's how you actually simplify the uh, operations at each of the routers. Now routers don't have to remember the uh, which source is sending and what it is sending, what application it is, what resources it requires. None of these are actually required. Only it need to look into this particular field and then make the appropriate forwarding decision. So that's what the code point and the differentiated services are all about. So uh, as I said, uh, there are three uh, classes. One is the default, uh, which is the, uh, the default uh, best effort service delivery model of the IP. And uh, when you set all the fields, to all the three bits for the first three bits for as a zero, then that indicates the uh, default. So uh, default, this is also called as the per half behavior. Per half behavior is how the router, an individual router will behave by looking at the values in this particular uh, field, which is the DSCP field. So uh, PHP, per half, PHP stands for per half behavior. Per half behavior is how exactly the router is going to behave. So, uh, if it is a default uh, per hop behavior, then if all the six bits are set to 0, 0, uh, the class and the next three bits uh, uh, within the uh, drop precedence are set to 0, that's the default one. And what it allows you is, say, if there is some router along the path, so if my source is here and the packet is going to D, and there are a bunch of intermediate routers, and if uh, uh, let's say the marking is done right here and it crosses two of them and then if one of the router here probably does not understand what is the uh, type of service field or the differentiated service field, then it just can still forward that particular packet because you don't need any differentiation right here when all the bits are actually set to zero. So that's how it actually maps. So if there is a router which also does not understand the type of service field, then also the forwarding can be done. And uh, uh, the, uh, the default strategy, just although it says that it is the best effort delivery model, it tries to uh, ensure that none of the packets coming from a particular source are continuously uh, dropped at a particular router. The second class is called, as I said, is the assured forwarding. Uh, in short, that was denoted as the AF. There are four different classes and these four classes actually guarantee some amount of the bandwidth and priority for uh, different classes that defined. And uh, uh, the RFC 2597 is the one which actually standardizes or defines these service uh, uh, classes uh, from 1 to 4. Similarly, RFC 3246 is the one which defines the expectations or what the network or the router is supposed to do when the uh, a packet with this uh, uh, class is, this code point is actually set and it actually arrives at the router. So basically the goal is to expedite service actually as the name suggests is to uh, forward the packet with a very high priority and uh, the routers need to find out uh, always even a packet uh, with the uh, expected forwarding set arrives at the router you need to forward it you know, with a very minimum uh, jitter and the delay and also you need to ensure that the uh, packet always finds an empty queue so that it can be scheduled for transmission immediately as and when it arrives. 
and it also uh, expect some amount of the bandwidth to be guaranteed to this class of the uh, traffic so uh, the uh, in short you want to minimize the queue length so shorter the queue length then the the chances of the packet getting lost or dropped at this particular route uh, router is actually minimal so that is the expected service uh, code point uh, is actually telling you and uh, uh, that's how the you have a set of code points and those code points are uh, put inside the ip packet header by the edge router or the first stop router and then uh, there are subsequent routers within the administrative domain of that network as that of the edge router which is putting that label or uh, going to forward make the forwarding decisions or giving the priorities to uh, the packet using that code point and now the question is how exactly this is done how does the edge router actually places this appropriate code point inside the packet so there is something called as the classifier which i was referring to in the earlier uh, uh, discussion so the classifier actually identifies using a bunch of parameters what are those parameters the source and destination ip address the protocol type field and the source and destination port number and uh, possibly if it is not the, uh, the router which is connected to the end user or it is receiving a packet from a previous uh, network a, a network which is under the administrative control of the different uh, unit you receive a packet from them and then you look at the differentiated service field that is set inside the uh, packet by the previous network and then you decide what is the code point that you want to assign to this particular packet uh, at this level and then so uh, the marker is the one which actually places that code point and the meter or the profiler is actually going to measure whether the traffic sent by this particular end host or this particular network is actually meeting the uh, criteria of what is called as the traffic uh, conditioning so uh, is it falling under the profile or in other words in simple terms what uh, it means is if you are an end user uh, so whether the end user is transmitting at the rate that he, he or she is supposed to transmit if it is violating then what to do so keeping the profile uh, nowadays also you might see that service providers also often ask that uh, uh, the peak bandwidth the tour i am going to give you uh, one gbps of the uh, transmission rate till you exhaust uh, cumulatively uh, maybe let's say uh, up to uh, 20 gb and once you exhaust that or consume that 20 gb then the rate of transmission would be reduced so in order to do that kind of the differentiation whether to uh, provide transmit this particular traffic or packet with that priority or not the metering is also done at the edge zero taking inputs from this one the next component within this one is called as the saper or the dropper that decides to uh, alter the either drop the packet or if it is fluctuating if it is let's say uh, the traffic is not conforming to the profile then the saper would probably uh, put them in the queue and make them exit at a constant rate from this particular network so that's what the whole system actually look like so uh, i repeat classifier using a bunch of parameters within the header fields of the ip packet and uh, the transport layer packet actually identifies uh, what kind of the packet it is and the metering and the profiler actually look into the uh, historical data transmission and keep track of how much data has been transmitted marker is the one which actually places the code point inside the packet and the saper and the dropper makes the decisions uh, Uh, at what rate and when the packet need to be transmitted if at all it is to be dropped and uh, when it to be dropped so uh, so this all uh, uh, the, as i was bring it in the differentiated service model every router at least within the uh, administrative domain of a single uh, administrative entity uh or re is referring to the uh, code point written inside the packet and making the forwarding decisions and uh, this behavior is called as uh, i said that for hub behavior
पर हाफ बिहेवियर इज मेनली डिपाइंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव दीज मेनी क्लासेस एंड देन विद इन दैट दी ड्रॉप इन प्रेफरेंसेस एंड फॉर एवरी क्लास ऑफ द ट्रैफिक एंड एवरी ड्रॉप प्रेफरेंस यू माइट और द राउटर माइट रिजर्व सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ द बैंड वेट दैट्स ऑफ इट्स एक्चुअली brings the notion of the expedited forwarding or the differentiated forwarding to the neck now so either you define the uh, link capacity or you commit a certain amount of the buffer space for, uh, to that particular class of the traffic so that the uh, packets from that particular uh, profile or the class is not actually dropped so if we have Uh, four of the four classes uh, four five classes for each of the class you commit a certain amount of the bandwidth and the buffer capacity so the differentiated service uh, uh, service model actually assigns a priority or a code point to the every packet that is incoming and uh, typically the edge router or the first stop router does that and the subsequent routers at least within the administrative control of the same service provider or uh those routers are actually looking into the code point written inside the packet and based on that they are making the prioritized uh, uh, forwarding decisions so now the question is how does the the priorities how do we actually bring the uh, prioritized service to these uh, packets so one way to think of this is i got uh, a set of queues and uh, each queue is holding the packets corresponding to a different class of the priority maybe the default uh, uh, service which is class 0 is uh, those packets are coming and sitting in this particular queue the assured forwarding class 1 is actually coming and sitting in this queue assured forwarding uh, class 2 uh, is actually coming and sitting in this queue and assured forwarding class 3 is coming and sitting in this queue and assured forwarding class 4 is coming and sitting in this queue and then the last class is expedited forwarding packets are coming in this queue and the scheduler uh, might pick up the packets from always from the higher priority queue and then if there are no packets available in the higher priority queue then it can go and select the packets from the next uh, uh, higher priority queue and so forth so the best effort service uh, packets will get the the chance of uh, being forwarded only when there are no packets which are sitting in the higher priority queues uh, and it is obvious to note that if there is a continuously uh, arrival of the packets with the higher priority set for example if there is enough packets coming uh, with the expedited uh, forwarding uh, code point at this uh, queue then the uh, subsequent other uh, uh, code point other packets with the other uh, priorities will not get their chance to do the trans uh, to be scheduled for transmission so that is the drawback with the static priority when you assign the priority you always pick up from the uh, highest priority queue then the, this is going to be uh, a, an issue so in packets in this queue might wait indefinitely they may not find the uh, the chance to be a chance of being forwarded down to the next hop so in order to uh, uh, the mitigate this kind of issue people also talked about something called as the weighted round robin uh, uh, scheduling model where uh, you assign a weight maybe for every five packets that i transmit from the expedited forwarding queue i pick up four packets from here three from here two from here one from here and probably one from here or so uh, with uh, uh, a fraction point four fraction of the packets i'm going to forward from this queue another point two from this one point one five from this queue point one from this one and point five from this one and whatever is left over is from the uh, the other region so something like this you by telling your packet scheduler to at what order and what rate they need to pick up the packets from different queues you can bring the this notion of the differentiated service and uh, uh, again the where to put that particular packet inside the queue is defined by that code point uh, that is set inside the
packet. Uh, with this, I'll stop it here. We'll come back and uh, look at uh, different kinds of the scheduling operations and uh, what kind of schedules I have in the next class. Thank you.